Hi, my name is Brad Regeer. I am a customer service engineer for Textron Aviation, specializing in the Hawker 4000. Today I'm going to show you how to load your nav database on the Hawker 4000. The first thing you will need to do is to pull the following circuit breakers. AC1 bus, which is circuit breaker number 5 on PDA1. AC2 bus, which is circuit breaker number 5 on PDA2. Drain heat, which is circuit breaker number 1 on PDA2. And standby pedostatic heat on circuit breaker panel 1. These are pulled to prevent the heat from coming on during the software load. Also select out the bay fan control, which is in the MCDU. Select the CB button, electrical menu, CB by systems, and then ECS. And this is to prevent the bay fans from unnecessary wear. The next thing you will need to do is to connect the aircraft laptop. The coax cable connects either to the port on the pilot side next to the headset jacks or in the back of the aircraft next to the AC external power plug. The other end of the coax connects to the T on the data tap box. Make sure that the terminating resistor is on the T as well. Connect the CAT5 and USB cords to the data tap box and the other end of those cables to the airplane's laptop computer. Power up the laptop and insert the CD from INDS the CD you burnt, or the USB flash drive from the software you downloaded from the INDS website. Start the remote terminal program on the laptop. When the CMC screen comes up, select Data Loader from the main menu. The program will search for any available software to load onto the airplane. When the program says it is done, then you will select Target Load from the menu at the bottom of the page. The program will take you to a menu and you will need to find the nav database file that you would like to load. If you use a CD, you will see the file under CD-ROM. If you use a USB flash drive, it will be in available drives under floppy drive. The nav database file starts with epic14zl. Select the file by using the green box and selecting enter. The file name will turn green and then click on select file at the bottom of the page. The program will give you a list of the possible places to load the nav database. Select AFGS 1 and 2 by highlighting them in green and click next. The computer will perform a configuration check. This tells you where the files will be uploaded and an expected time to load. After the configuration check is complete, click on start load. After the target load is done, click on DLS menu and the program will again search for the software to load. This time when it is done, click on full load. Highlight and select the nav database software and after the configuration check is done, click on start load. You will notice that the AFGS 1 and 2 will say already loaded. Do not disconnect the laptop or remove power from the airplane while the software is loading. Also, do not perform other maintenance during this time. Unwanted results could occur. When you see loading sequence complete surrounded by asterisks, then you know the loading is done. If you have any errors, you can select retry. This will try to reload the software to the LRUs that failed. If the retry does not work, you can try to reboot the laptop and airplane and target load the LRUs that failed. If this still does not work, you will need to target load the operational software to the failed LRUs and then try to reload the nav database software. Once the software has loaded, you will need to verify it. To verify the nav database, you go to the MFD in the top right drop-down menu and select SCMS. 
verify that all the nav database files on pages 2 and 5 have a file name next to them. Also, go to the MCDU nav ident page and verify that the active nav database will be green and either the active or the non-active nav database should have the effective date of the database that you just loaded. If you have any questions, you can call us at 1-800-HAWKER2 or email us at hawker underscore 4000 underscore support at txtav.com. Thank you for your time and have a good day.